things. And let me pause. Yeah. Okay. I am Trisha Ben. I'm the CEO of C-Suite Network, and I am always so thrilled to be able to kick off the Women's Coaching and Consulting Council time together today, especially. I mean, it, it, this is going to be an incredible discussion, I have no doubt. Uh, but our chair is going to do the introduction of the topic and our special guest tonight, or today, I should say. And so that's Kathleen Caldwell. Kathleen Caldwell is the CEO of Caldwell Consulting Group and obviously the founder of the C-Suite Network Women's Coaching and Consulting Council and the Women's Success Accelerator. Um, everybody who's ever worked with Kathleen as you couldn't possibly have a stronger reporter and, and champion for this man that she serves here in the C-suite and obviously beyond to so many keys of incredible executive women and business owners, influence that are out there making a difference with their business success and the success of everyone they serve. So Kathleen, I'm going to hand things over to you. I know today is going to be incredible. I can't wait. And uh, and thank you so much again for setting up incredible content for us here in the Women's Coaching and Consulting Group. Trisha Ben, thank you. Thank you. Such a delight. I always appreciate you kicking us off. It just uh, elevates our whole conversation. So really appreciate you doing that. And we can't wait to do our Ask the CEO series, which is going to be coming up. So to contrast Jeffrey and Trisha's uh, leadership styles and mindset and strategy, it's going to be exciting. You're more aligned than we even know. So that's great. Good. So Jeffrey, Thank you for being our guest today, our guest esteemed faculty member. And with your permission, we always start out our program with just a quick recap of where we've been in the last uh, last month or so. Would would that be all right with you? And you can absolutely, yeah. Thank you. We are so big on edifying and lifting up our esteemed faculty members. And to all of you who are here, thank you, thank you. And we're so delighted for each of you watching the replay and enjoying our replay. Today's program is all about asking the chairman what an incredible opportunity to learn from Jeffrey Hazlett. And I'll do a formal introduction in just a moment, but what are the inside secrets from your perspective, Jeffrey, about how to sharpen our strategic edge? And so with that, thank you again, Tricia, for the introduction. I'm Kathleen Caldwell, founder of the C-Suite Network Women's Coaching and Consulting Council. It is my joy in life to be the founder of this council, gather powerful women, elevate each of our, our esteemed faculty members. I'm an author, speaker, and uh, my business family is C-Suite Network, and I'm so delighted to be here. So thank you for that. And very briefly, we've had, as always, we have pick, we're picking up the pace in our council, and every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, please tune in because we've got great programs. Susan Younger did an incredible program just two weeks ago about how to create more compassion and connections. And it was a great, vibrant discussion. So thank you, Susan, to you. Cindy Watson talked about how to scale up your business. Great, great program. And honestly, when I say great program, I mean it. You'll know when you see the replays or when you're here live. Deb Creer talked about how to elevate and what are the new trends around podcasting. She went to PodFest and came back and shared all the goodies. And of course, Gloria St. Martin Lowry talked about how to get, when you're in corporate, how to build allies, champions, advocates. And then we talked about, of course, a seven-figure business. How do we move beyond six figures into a seven-figure scaled leverage business? Sonia Jante, thank you. Your program was exceptional. Your special assessment you gave to us as a gift, extraordinary. Thank you for that. And of course, Christina DiGiacomo, talking about how to elevate your business and use AI, AI for everything. So Christina, and big shout out to you, Christina, for your new tech council. We are so thrilled for you. So with that, it is my delight to introduce, to formally introduce our guest esteemed faculty member, Jeffrey Hazlett. And as a formal introduction, Jeffrey is a primetime television radio host of C-Suite Network with in C-Suite with Jeffrey Hazlett and Executive Perspectives on C-Suite TV and All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett on C-Suite Radio. J 
Jeffrey is a global business celebrity, speaker, best-selling author, and chairman of C-Suite Network, hence Ask the Chairman today. And he's, of course, as we all know, a well-traveled public speaker in the NSA Hall of Speaker fame and the author of four best-selling books, and I know more to come. And one of the people in this world, I could go on and on and tell you more about all of the accolades that Jeffrey Hazlett brings to to the world and to the C-Suite network. However, you can see from the picture on the screen here, my slide, one of the things that I really appreciate most about Jeffrey is his commitment, not only to business and getting business done, but also to family, to community, and to being not only a father and a husband, but also a grandpa. So with that, Jeffrey, I'd like to turn the podium and we'll move over to asking you some questions. So before we do that, Let's take ourselves off mute and in C-Suite Network Women's Coaching Good Consultancy style, give you a little shout out and a little uh, welcome, uh, welcome. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Uh, thank you. Welcome. A little woohoo. You know, you raided my you raided my uh my Facebook page. In fact, I'm still mad about that picture about the table because I I'm I'm a perfection. And I you if you look in the lower hand corner of the left hand corner of that picture, you can see a napkin ring that I left on the table before I, I snapped that picture. I should have took it off. But I love I set that table, by the way. I ironed that tablecloth, and I set that table. I put that out there. Why Tammy went to? Why, no, Tammy went to the store. That's where she was at. But I, I like a good formal. I like a every once in a while. I think you should have a formal set down like that with your family. It's just kind of a nice thing to do, in my opinion. And and so anyway, that's what I did. So I enjoy that. Thank you, and Jeffrey. I also wanted to share with you. Speaking of formal and fancy. I keep my memorabilia from my C-suite oh, wow. event. And uh, I just wanted to share with everyone that the first time we met was in Chicago. It was yep. June 7th, 2015 at the beautiful Marriott Hotel, the JW Marriott. And so this is where I first met you. I first met Sheila Anderson and Trisha Ben. And uh, I have to say my business life and my life in general has prospered ever since. So thank you that, for that. That's awesome. I, I remember I remember that event well. I, it was right after I actually lost my sight, some of my sight. I, I had two detached retinas. I was in between a, a eye patches and everything else. So I, I remember that event. It was a great event. And that was uh, my granddaughter had just been born months before that. And she came to that event and we were all holding her and carrying her. And, you know, family is a big part of what I do. So I remember that. Some of my biggest memories are from that that weekend. Yeah, yeah, really great. And so, uh, you know, I thought we would talk about sharpening our strategic edge and, you know, how, how again, uh, you've got such great swagger. We want to talk about that. And, and you know, as women, I kind of put our gender aside a little bit for a moment to say, how can we learn from you as a business colleague and as a business mentor? And, you know, some of the things that you have done, many of the things that you've done, when you moved from a chief marketing officer with Kodak into building your celebrity brand, I think we can all learn about the journey you took. How did you do that? I mean, was it a conscious mm. decision? What, because we can all level up our brands as well, learning from you. Yeah, in hindsight, I, I made some big mistakes in leaving Kodak. I could I left a lot of money on the table. You know, I didn't, I was more of an emotional decision. I just said, I'm done. And uh, we'd just gone through some really horrific things to get through uh, the economic downturn in 2009, 8, 9, um, 9 being terrible. Um, and then, you know, we were just finishing it up and I said, no, nah, I'm leaving. And I should have probably, you know, you know, the golden parachute, all that stuff. I just left it. I just said, I don't want it. I, I should, in hindsight, I should have took it. Uh, because of how how hard it was to make the transition, and it wasn't easy. It was it was okay, but it, it could have been better. And uh, certainly, what I left, you know, literally, you know, many hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table, and because uh, the stock wasn't that good, I'd already decided I was going to lose all that stock and everything else because it wasn't going to. I was all underwater at that time with Kodak. When you when you get the stock options at twenty seven dollars, your stock's trading at ten eleven. You know you just it's it's hard to it's hard to claw that back. And and at that point, it, with leadership and everything, we you know I could tell you we weren't going to claw it back. So, um, you know it wasn't um, you know it wasn't a huge strategic decision. I just said, look, I want to go back to what I was doing, which was 
you know, uh, speaking primarily, uh, being more of a thought leader and, uh, you know, and then consulting. And I had no staff, nothing, just decided to leave and do it. And But I did have a, a little bit of a plan in place. I launched the book in May of that year, 2010. Um, in May, I knew the, the, and that was, and I got a big advance. It was a good advance. And, and, um, and, you know, then I learned the hard way of what, what the, the publishers and authors that don't do anything for you and they don't come through and you're really on your own and what you have to do. And so those, those learnings go into what we do today. And, you know, we still see that every day, Trisha and I, and Carl and everybody, we see, so many thought leaders and, and so many brands who are trying to go out there and they're, they're just sucked in by what I call false prophets of, of people saying, well, you got to do it like this and do it like that. And of course, we're dedicated to doing it, you know, in the, we're dedicating to lay out the bumper rules like that, the, the, you know, the bumpers on either side to say this is kind of how it's done. Choose the way you want to inside of that. But the good stuff is here. This other stuff that most of these guys tell you is way over here and uh, the false stuff. And then you decide what you want to do between fame or fortune and, and build that business. And, you know, I should say, what do you want? Fame, fortune or impact um, is the other one that I, I'm kind of adding, because I think most most thought leaders and most people, most brands, they want to have an impact. And um, and in that if you do the impact, you know, then it gives you the it gives you the fortune and then. From that, you can, if you do them right, you can gain the fame or you can buy it if that's really what you want. So when you were creating your brand, moving from your, you know, your, your uh, CMO position, and you had been in executive positions before that time, of course, running organizations, yep. what did, what were your thoughts about this thought leadership? How, mm. What were your philosophies about how do you build it? How do you make it different? Because it's it's so important now more than ever with yeah. the the C suite moving around and we're only responsible for ourselves. Probably not going to get that gold watch or you know the stock options we depended on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a different myself. thing. I it's I it's something that if if you can imagine, most social media wasn't around in two thousand and six, right? So it, you and it really came into being around 2008 is when you started seeing more of it uh, starting to occur. I remember I was one of the first thousand people on Twitter, and of course, you know, Twitter or X is a lot different than it was back then. Here it is now, tw you know, almost 20 years later. And but back then that wasn't there. So you know, to be when I was on the front cover of uh, say Forbes magazine and they named me the celebrity CMO because of the work I was doing on the Celebrity Apprentice show and so forth. And in fact, and I was very visible, but I used, I learned the power of media. And I learned the power of what would become social media and, and being able to position your brand, you know, to create greater reach and discovery gives you greater conversion. But you, you know, you got to get engaged. You have to be thoughtful. You have to have certain things. There, there's a number of things you have to do to be a thought leader that weren't developed at that time. And, and they, we developed them over a period of time. And there's a lot of people who've done some really good work in this area, Randy Gage being one of those. I remember Randy put the very first list together. I was sitting in a National Speaker Association convention and he said, this is what it takes to be a thought leader. So well, since then I've added things to it. You know, you gotta have haters, you have to be quoted. You have to have a, you have to have a book, you know, you have to be the, the authoritative, uh, authoritative um, uh, leader on that particular subject and so forth and so on. There's lots of different things to do. And back then, you know, uh, I just knew that there was there was power in media, uh, Kathleen. So I knew that if I sold myself, you know, and interjected myself into that, then I basically would sell the brand. I was and I and I was using me as a tool. I didn't care, you know. Um, and and by the way, in a corporation, you got to understand that was very edgy, and also something that just wasn't done because. You know, I got a CEO, I've got other people who are in that organization and they might get upset, you know, or you're, you're always supposed to put the CEO first. And but the CEO was very good to me and very good in saying, no, you be that person. You go out and do this. You know, you be the eye candy, so to speak. And then occasionally, you know, I bring him in on the big stuff because, you know, that's the that stuff he handled. And But the other things I would just go out and do because I was mostly selling the product everywhere I was going. I'm walking with a printer. I'm walking with a camera. I'm walking with motion picture film. You know, I'm walking with our, you know, big commercial uh, uh, printing that we were doing at the time. 
all to change the way that, you know, codec memories were being done because it was all about M3I squared, which is make, manage, and move images and information. And that's what we do. And we were, we were all about emotional technology, whether it be on a sheet of paper or it be in a motion picture film or it be in your camera. And, and so we had to reinvent that. And so, um, and, and I, it's no different than what I think today. I think today, each of us here, whether you're an executive in a brand or you're a thought leader, you have to become a media company. And I mention this all the time that in St. Louis, there's 119 dry cleaners, you know, and, and in order to stand out now and, and not because if, if you're successful in search, if you're successful in digital, the more successful you are, the more expensive it is for you to continue to own that category. So you have to stand out and you have to create the category and become that category leader. Now, whether you're a retail business a, you know, a service business, a, you know, an expert, an author, speaker, coach, trainer, whatever it might be, you have to really, truly become the leader and the organic leader in that category and really dominate. And so you have to become a media company. So even that, even that, that dry cleaner has to become known as the doctor of spots and you can create content. And by creating content to show people how you're going to get blood stains out or grass stains out or or that wine that was spilled on your wedding dress i'm going to show you how to do this because i'm the doctor of spots you know and and it's not about giving up the way the secrets it's about just having a conversation engagement because most of you will still go i'm not going to ruin that dress i'm going to take it to you because you're the doctor of spots and you're going to do it and so that's what this is about and so i'm you know whether you're Hey, you just name it, cannabis business, uh, dog dog poop scooping operation. I see Deb here, so I know she's got dogs. And so not that not that I think of that when I see Deb, but you know what I'm saying. It's just I'm thinking of different kinds of businesses. You you have to become that that expert, you know? And 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 you want to be that. And 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 by having that, that puts you in a in a position of authority. And so I did see that when I was at Kodak and I used it extremely well. And, and I'm not, you know, it's not bragging when it's true. Okay. Let's just be clear. So, you know, and so uh, that's where I saw the need for it moving forward. And, and I've developed it more over the last, you know, 14 years as I've left Kodak of this is what you got to do to take advantage of it, especially in this digital world, because it used to be, you could get on TV and it would convert to stuff that doesn't happen anymore. Mostly because there's not many people watching like they used to, and, the, and there's so many choices. There's now going to be millions and millions of, of podcast shows and there's millions and millions of TV shows. Obviously, there's, you know, uh, tens and hundreds of millions of business books and, and different ways to do that. You know, you just have to really you have to really take the sun and go to where the people are. And, and, and to do that, you got to take advantage of, of being a media company. Yeah, ec excellent. And what you do so well, Jeffrey, and we all see it, is you get into a category or you get into a point of view, your point of view, and then you just own it. And we it's, try. you know, yeah. And and I think, and by the way, raise your hand, ladies. We have got, I know we've all got questions because you've asked me in advance of today. You've got questions for Jeffrey. Um, is with so many things that we could be quote, you know, experts on thought leaders on where there's opportunities. What's your, th what are your thoughts about where to go with so many options and choices? How do you pick? <laughs> okay. Well, so I, in order to be successful, I think it, it's real important for you to capture customer behavior. So you want to go where the people are, not where you want to be, you know, it's it, unless you can really capture and draw and in in attract, but you know it's not easy to pull people out of custom out of their behavior that they're so accustomed to. It's not an easy thing to do. So capturing customer behavior is so critical to your success, right? And then I think you also have to really spend time on what problem you're solving. Tyler, our chief marketing officer, my son, you know, he always asks this question because sometimes we start meetings, we start you know, all we do an event, we do all this. And I, and I always go back to what are you, what are you trying to solve? Right. What is it you're trying to get to so that you can focus on that? And then, then now let's have a meeting about it. Now let's have a, let's have a conference about it. Now let's have this. So we can identify with this great, the greatest accuracy, the, the value that we can put on it by solving that problem, you know, which is very critical because that and it might be less people, but more value, you might be able to charge more. And I think that's important for us to have to be able to focus on. So I, I want to spend 
time going where I can make impact with the greatest amount of people. So I'm really about always about, you know, reach, discovery and conversion and always trying to do what I can in those three areas so that I can have a greater impact. And so focus. So I spend a lot of our time in the meetings, you know, as I move from CEO to chairman of the organization, it's more around focusing us, uh, you know, our time on spending where we're going to have the greatest impact, you know, and the greatest return. Um, and so that's where I, that's where I focus. And, and, you know, we're, we're now using this thing where we're helping a great number of people on reach discovery and conversion around high intent to buy. And that's the, a good, a good phrase to use for each of us. Where can I find the highest intent to buy, you know? So, and, and so I spent a great, a great deal of time, like, Hey, that's a waste of time. That, 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 that ain't going to get us anywhere. It's great. And, and two years ago, I would love that because it's a, you know, we're, there's a pony in there somewhere, but I don't want to look for just little ponies in there somewhere. I want to look for a herd of ponies. And, uh, and then I want to look for show ponies and, you know, rich ponies. And, uh, you know, and so that's, that's, that's the focus, I think, of where you want to spend your time. You, I think you spend more time up front thinking about what you want and where it's at and how to get to it and then how to solve it than you do, you should spend on how to do it. Yes, excellent. And one of the things that I've learned so, of so many is conditions of satisfaction. And, you know, that's one of your your major yep. tenets that you talk about all the time. For those that have not heard that, would you tell us more about that? Because it's woven yeah, into what you said. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I and the real phrase is mutual conditions of satisfaction. So, you know, I, I want to know what my conditions of satisfaction, but if I'm working for somebody else, I want to know what mutual conditions of satisfaction, because if they're mutual, then we both win. And if we both win, that means typically there's something exchanged in that transaction. And so so I when I'm talking to people, you know, I make it very clear when we're working together with you, there it's mutual conditions of satisfaction. Like I have a say in this too. Like it's not just about you. You're not just giving me money. I get to decide whether I want to work with you and put up with you and, you know, and do and do these all these things that, that we're going to do together. So so I, I make it very clear they're mutual conditions of satisfaction that, you you know, I get I get you. You know, we have a lot of clients, meaning a lot of brands that come to us, you know, to do branded services and do marketing. And and uh, and that's a big piece of everything that we do and our partners. And everybody always comes with this. You know, everybody starts with this cocky attitude, all of us, everyone that I'm really good. I know what I'm doing. And what are you going to do for me? And it's, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, wait, wait a second. I'm going to, you know, it's like that. If Seeing how this is a women's group, I can use this analogy. You know, the old Seinfeld episode with Elaine, when she birth control was running out and she had this very special birth control sponge that she loved. And so, you know, she went out and got a couple cases of this and she had only so many sponges to be able to use for birth control. And so every time she was about to get intimate with a, uh, some some gentleman, she would she would put them to an interview where they sponge worthy. I mean, and so and I think it's important for us to understand, you know, in these conversations, what are those mutual conditions of satisfaction? You don't just get to perform, you know. Uh, I got to perform too. And what do we both get out of it? And it better be, you know, sponge worth. Note to self. Always. I bet you never had yeah. that in your interviews before. In your <laughs> thing. No. And I can't, Jeffrey, I can't wait to tell Bernie that this is now our new internal tech council mantra. Bernie, are yeah. they sponge worthy? Are this they is sponge gonna worthy? Be, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> well, if you only have so many sponges, you don't want to waste your time, right? Of you know? course. And, and by the way, there's, you know, I, let me give you a good example. There's another uh, speaker who uh, we used to be part of the Thought Council, Bob Grove, a uh, pastor out of uh, Virginia Beach. And one day he figured out when his grandmother died at a certain age, and he was this age, and he thought, well, I'm going to, my goal is to live as long as my grandmother, which is a very old, you know, certain age. So he counted out the number of days. And let's just say it was 10,000 days. Got it? Fair enough. So he went and got a big jar, actually got two big jars. In one of the jars, he put 10,000 pennies in it. And he set the jars side by side. And every day at the end of the day, he would take a penny and he would look at it. And he would think about it of what did I do? Was the penny worth it that day? And he'd spend the penny and he'd put it in the bottle. So every day he was trying to make sure, am I using my time the way I want to use my time? And the faster those pennies go down, the more important of utilizing the time 
becomes. And I think that's a good lesson for all of us here. And we have the choice. We have the ability to do it. And we can we can put the emphasis on what we do with our time early, or we can put it on later. We can put it on any time. And I think that's a great analogy, you know, to, to use in, you know, I, you know, when we talk about mutual conditions of satisfaction, but for ourselves, are we are we utilizing the time as effectively as we should? And I think most of us, all of us would say, no, we're not. And so, you know, my job is to how do I do that better? And I try every day and I, I fail. I fail. Um, I would like to do it better every day. I like to think that every day. And and when I do those days, man, do I feel on the top of the world? You know, Christina, I feel like I'm like I'm the king of the world, the queen of the world, you know. And uh, and when I get that list completed, when I'm able to email Trish and say, aha, I've only got four emails in my inbox. I bet you I'm beating you and and so forth and so on. And 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 that's that's that to me is a pretty cool way of looking at life. Yes. And so, Jeffrey, speaking of time and using your time, you know, being very rigorous about this is what do you see from the chairman role? And again, you know, put, raise your hand, sisters, and let's let's get into a conversation more here, too. So, Jeffrey, what do you see, you know, looking at the landscape here in thought leadership and business? And many of us are executive coaches and we're we've got our clients. Our clients are C-suite executives and teams and leaders, you know, what are you seeing is working right now when it comes to media, comes to exposure, getting mm -hmm. our thought leadership out there, and of course, monetizing our thought well, leadership connection. I, you know, I'm going to be speaking at a conference in June at this um, chief revenue officers conference, and I was uh, working on some notes today. And, you know, I just think everybody has to, as I said earlier, you have to be a media company. And if, you know, if you could do one thing, it's a podcast. It's a, it's a podcast. If I if that's if that's it, I mean, and I would just interview the people I'm trying to do business with that alone. OK, because I know that if I get somebody in and I get an interview, and we get an interesting conversation. Good things come out on both sides. As a result, they turn to me and say, tell me more about what you do. Tell, tell me more about your speaking. Tell me more about in. Oh, by the way, you know, Jim, John, uh, Jane, uh, Julie, whoever I'm interviewing. Hey, please let me send you a copy of my latest book based on a conversation it was a certain chapter i'm going to circle it i'm going to put it a bookmark i'm going to send it to you you know so forth and so on though then then that becomes the opening for me so that if i had to do that one thing that's the one thing i would make sure that i'm doing and then somebody said because if you can do a podcast and you're interviewing the people you want to do business with and let's say that you could close about 20 percent of them and you do 50 podcasts well that's 10 new clients a year and then people say, well, geez, I'd like to do better. Well, are you going to sell better? Chances are no, because you are kind of where you're at and with your skill set. So you're probably not. Well, then what do you do? You increase the number of podcasts that you do. Instead of doing one every week, do, you know, you know, one every week plus one in between each other week. And then maybe go to twice a week or whatever. Then you can increase that frequency. You'll probably see a better, better rate of return or same rate of return, but a greater number of closes as a result. So those are the things that you want to focus in on. And those, you know, what is it that I do here that I can see an exact, you know, uh, immediate or at some point, you know, some pipeline return in the things that I'm doing. So that would be one. I would, I would, the next thing I would do is use events very, very well. So, and I don't think a lot of people do it. And I'm, I'm quite frank, I don't think people do it as good as I do. I'm one of the best at it. And that is going to every event that we have and like I send notes out to people that I'm there in my pipeline saying, I'm going to be here in Phoenix. I'm going to be here in Dallas. I'm going to be here in New York. Can you meet with me? Can you meet with me that week? And I bug the living crap out of them until they say, yes, yes, yes. You know, and then then I'll, then I'll say, and then I'll invite other people that I think I might want to also make and then get them to the event. So I use the events as closing events. And then I use the stage for that as well, where I can, you know, get in front of a target rich environment and speak. Um, there's a group that's putting on about nine expos, business expos. I meet with them tomorrow to talk about a partnership on how we can be at that event. Use me as the keynote, use me as the draw. And then we can then use that to close new business, invite people in, do a mixer, do this, you know, do a pre-breakfast, you know, all the things that we do that uh, not just myself, but Tricia is very good at as well. Um, and, and that's, you know, those are the kind of just simple things, quite frankly, that's not a difficult thing to do. 
And then at the same time, I think you got to have that book. You got to have some of those things. I mean, do you have to? No. Does it help you? Yes. All right. I mean, I've got a room full of books. Don't get me wrong. I got a room full of books, right? Uh, that we haven't sold, but I got to do a better job of utilizing those because they're great assets. And so this will be the year that we're going to do that. And, um, you know, just so you figure out those things that are worked very effectively and work the one or two or three things that are, and just make sure you do a good job on those. Cause you can't do it all. Can't do it all. I, you know, now we're at the point now, you know, Kathleen, I can't go to every meeting. I, there's no way Trisha and I are talking about this There's no way, you know, um, it's, it just, it will kill you, you know? So we have to find the things that we can do and be very strategic about it. So. Yeah. And C-suite radio to get, our podcast up. And of course, the brilliant move about employing, utilizing ambassadors, city ambassadors, oh, yeah. regional approach. And, you know, big shout out to Susan K. Younger for that. And Christina DiGiacomo. Yeah, Chris, yeah exactly. And so, uh, Terry, you had your hand up. Jump in, please. Terry, Terry, Terry's been, in, she's been an ambassador for us too. She's, exactly. she pulls people in. Lots of people do. I mean, that's the nature of it. I mean, let's spread the wealth. Let's spread some of the goodness around about this. Yeah. So Jeffrey, my question is that I've heard you say that selling today is different than it was even a year ago. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier uh, the high intent to buy. What do you see the current back that reaching out to people that are high intent to buy and the relationship building um, to get clients and lasting clients? Well, I think it, I think we should spend more time with uh, referrals to me are the new goal for everybody in that using referrals from one to another so that it gets me the instant credibility I need with the person I'm targeting, right? Um, it helps that they know who you are, but what's the first thing when you say to somebody you want to meet with them, what do they go do? They go look you up, right? So they'll, they're doing their homework. Where it used to be before, you had to kind of take them through a sales cycle to lead them down that path. Well, now it, they skip all that and go right to this, you know? So... There, there, there's some things that you have to do to make sure that you are credible and that you meet the bar. You know, there's Carol Cameron there. You got to have your LinkedIn profile. That's your, you know, your sign on the sign on Main Street. You got to have that up to speed. A website isn't the isn't the be all anymore. Right. It's but it is a it's a table stakes. It's the brochure online that you got to have. And and, you know, and I know a lot of people I have all these people who you're updating them every freaking year and a brand new I'm redoing my brand. And I just think, what do you, you stop, stop doing that. You know, get your brand, what it is. Your brand is not, but your promise delivered. You know, go hire somebody like Sheila Anderson and get your shit together and do it right. Okay. And then once you get that right, move on uh, and then make sure you're building on top of that. But those are brand elements, but all those things are critical but it's in the in the ask. It's in the it's in the setup of the ask, Terry, is my opinion, that you've got to be able to do it and show people that there's going to be a fairly they just become savvier. You know, we've all become savvier. We cut through the crap a lot faster. We figure it out faster. And so, you know, I I, I just about to post something I sent to the team that I was reminded of this week where somebody quoted me in a book. Brant Pendivich quoted me in the three minute rule. And I just happened to email a former CMO of a Wall Street firm about something. And she goes, oh, my God, this is a sign. I was reading this page and it just talked about you right when I saw your 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 thing pop up. She circled it, sent me a picture of it. And I looked and read the thing. and It was about my Moses rule. And my Moses rule was something that I put in place some time ago at Kodak. When people would come to me and I said, just bring me the Moses, you know, make it a Moses rule. And I said, what's that? Well, when you come to pitch me, don't bring me the whole book of Moses and the Holy Bible. Just bring me the two PowerPoint slides of the Ten Commandments. The five bullet points on this page and five bullet points on this page, that's what you got to sell me on. No more than seven words, but no more than five bullet points each. And tell me what that is you're selling me. If you can't get your pitch down to that, then you don't have a pitch. And, and so... Um, you know, I just think it's important for you to be very succinct and direct and, and show the value of what you're doing and what they'll miss out on if they don't participate. Excellent. And so, Jeffrey, help us also for your point of view on this exact topic from the perspective of 
being the CMO, you're the chairman now, you are involved with so many different companies, uh, you're on boards of directors. If we as a coach consultant want to connect with you, from your perspective, what's the best way we can do that? You, well, what do you mean in terms of uh, engaging or yeah, just... engaging to say, hey, you know, if someone's coming to you, let's just say even now, so, uh, let's say that uh, someone has a, a opportunity and offer something Perfect. they'd like to partner yeah. with you on partner. How, yeah, don't, how yeah, do people don't... best connect with you that way? Well, first of all, just, you know, reach out me direct, whatever. Um, it's a couple of things. I'll, I'll talk about that because I think we, we, we think that the way we do things is the way I want to do things. So like, for instance, everybody likes to text now, right? Like that's the, if you want to engage with me, if you want to get my attention quickly, add yeah, text with me, but then don't keep sending me stuff like that. Get into my workflow. My workflow is on email. My workflow is getting it to my team and get them involved. And the last thing you want to do is when I start copying them in is only sending it back to me. Okay. Cause that just tells me one, you, you, you're, you're not paying attention. I copied these folks in. I want this team involved because that's I'm the chairman of the company now or I'm chairman of this company or chairman of this company. I don't make those key decisions. I influence those key decisions. And it's rare. It's rare that I come down to Trisha and say, Trisha, you're doing this. It's rare. And I got to be pretty ticked off to do that. Right. Or or I'm just grumpy and I, I don't have time. Right. So that's one thing is to find out the best way in which to engage. That's number one. And then use that channel. So it's okay to get my attention through a text, but then let, and I, I almost always say, let me, can I move that? I'm moving this to email. Or if you see me move it to email, take the hint. Okay. So, uh, because I'm trying to bull in the bigger, bigger part of the team. And I, and, and I'm, I just don't have time for this all day long. I just don't, I get hundreds of texts a day. And now with the, you know, I got Lucchese's boots sending me text. I got Airbnb sending me text. I got the world market. I just bought something there. They, they get a discount. Now they're sending me texts. You know, it's like, Oh, will you guys stop this crap? You know, I'm not, I don't like you that much. Right. So, um, you know, so therefore, you know, delete, delete, delete. Now I'll never get their text again. And that, and by the way, I'm fine with that. All right. So if you if you abuse that, that's what happens. And by the way, that's what people are doing with you. Select, deselect, select, deselect. What's relevant and what's irrelevant. The, the next uh, the next piece is don't, by all means, don't say, hey, let's have coffee. I could care less about coffee. I don't drink coffee anymore. OK, so uh, get to the point. What is it you want? And by the way, typically for a person like myself or another C-suite executive is you better do it in the window that I'm reading. If it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, then I'm probably less likely to, trust me, uh, Trisha will tell you this, I won't read it. If you put more than one thing in an email, chances are I'm not reading it. Because I'm looking at it and sending it on, and then that's it. And then, because I am I live by the philosophy, you know, uh, to automate things, delegate them, or eliminate things. That's what I'm trying to do all the time. You know, and like right now I've got like maybe seven to eight emails in my inbox, but I try to keep that less than five and I try to keep my list down. And, you know, I just, I'm just, I'm going too fast. I'm going too fast. I feel like when I wake up in the morning, um, Kathleen, that I'm already behind. You know what I mean? And I don't like that feeling, but that's where I'm at this week. And, um, and, and it's just because I got so many opportunities, so many things to get done that I just, I just feel like I, I got to get to them all. And I want, to, I want, I, I hate losing. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeffrey, we'll jump over to Christina in, in a moment here too. This is also a question that I'm very curious about is at this season in your career, because you're, you're, I mean, I hate to say this, but typical age, you know, you're in the demographic of some of our clients. What's on your mind now for your life and your legacy and your mindset? I ain't going anywhere. I'm in my prime right now. So I feel like I'm just hitting it. I'm, I look, I look back and I think about my age and I'm looking, I used to think that was old people. And now I think that young people. So it's, uh, I just don't see any, I don't see that changing for a while, at least for the next, you know, five years or so, because I'm just having so much fun. Now I'm really starting to, it's starting to work. My God, right, it took right. this long to get it to work. I'd like to stick around and make it work for a little bit. So so yeah, and I didn't it, mean yeah, retire. I, I meant like, you know, because you picked up the pace. I've seen you really pick up the pace well, over yeah. the last nine, 10 years. And so I, I think that I see a sense of urgency and I think we all do 
is, I think it also comes back to when you're saying, don't waste your time. Yeah. I mean, coming to you with an opportunity, be clear, be cr concise. Uh, we're going to talk about in two weeks of, uh, you know, be bright, be brilliant, be bold and be gone. Yeah. Everybody likes to come into everybody and tell them how to run their business. It, it's always an interesting thing. You know, that's, that's probably the biggest mistakes most people make is, is not, is let me, let, they like to come forward and tell you how you, you need to run a council. You need to do this. You need to do that rather than you know, my my first question almost every time I've ever had a, any conversation with any of you is, how can I help you? Or if I see something and then I ask you, are you open to a, a, some input? You know, um, like, you know, I saw you doing this and hey, you ever thought about like this? You ever thought of this? And that's my way of just trying to be as helpful as I can without being this pushy. Because I'm the kind of person that, you know, I, I see somebody run their business wrong. I want to get in and fix it, you know, so. Um, and I'm talking about big businesses. I almost want to call the CEO of the company and just say, hey, what are you thinking of? You know, what, what the hell's going on in your head when you see that? But, but you know, that, that that's not helpful to people. So um, that's, yeah. So picking up the pace is important for me um, just because, you know, it's, it, three years ago, I realized that I'm, I, pa I live past my age of my father. And when that happens in your life, it, that's a, that's kind of an awakening moment, Right. Like I'm now, I'm now outliving my father. Holy shit. Now he died at a young age, but you know, because of Agent Orange and some other complications of serving in the military and smoking. But, uh, you know, it does, it does, it does shake you a little bit. And then you get grandkids in your life. And then that, you know, and like Deb, Deb, get, Deb gets beagles. You get beagles in your life. And, and then that, that makes you, you know, hunker down. It makes you hunker down. Yeah. Wow. There you, there, yeah, there you go. <laughs> By the way, you, you guys don't know, Deb is like an expert. I was in Miami one time and I ran into some people that, that do show dogs of beagles. They they show beagles. And I mentioned Deb and they go, oh my gosh, you know Deb? It was like that. It was like that. It's like, oh gosh, she's the beagle queen. Are you kidding me? It was like, so it's, there's a, you can be thought leaders in lots of different areas, which is awesome. You're right. And you always say, you never know who's sitting in the square next to you. Man, you isn't that know. the truth? Isn't that the truth? I mean, I was on the phone today with somebody who used to work at the Venetian and I hadn't seen him in 11 years. And I saw him in Vegas and I thought, wow, he looks familiar. And then he reminded me that, you know, Hey, I met you in uh, 2010 uh, when, you know, I, I was doing so I was, I used to work with uh, Sheldon Adelson at the Venetian. So, and uh, it was interesting. So you never know who, who, who you run into. Yeah. It's all the time. You see this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And you know, your, your, I know your mantra is being kind and how can I help that kind of mindset follows us wherever we go. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Yes. So thank you, Christina, please jump in. We want to hear your question, your point of view here, dear. Thanks. So Jeffrey, I'd like, I'd like to go back uh, and talk more about, uh, have you elaborate more on, um, that sort of initial connection and how someone can get your attention, like someone like you. So for example, I just had an, an email back and forth with someone who was a referral and immediately they were like, uh, where do you see our synergies? Like what, what's the context of this interaction? They asked me what my superpowers were, um, thing, things like that. So I, I said, oh, okay, well, I'm in technology council. I'm really passionate about AI. I hear that's what you do, et cetera. And um, they kind of came back to me and they're like, okay, yeah, I guess we could meet or we could just keep this thread going. I'm really busy. I'm launching this, 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 this. And it just kind of started to feel like I wasn't either getting, I don't know what I was doing wrong. So, but eventually, um, you know, so so they just kept telling me how busy they were. And um, I wrote to them, I'm like, look, I'm not trying to sell you on anything because they were like, what's the value proposition of your council? And so I said, well, we actually try to help people meet the unmeetable. Um, you know, we're meeting people that are behind the scenes doing really big things that you don't actually know who they are. And and this person's response was like, well, I'm a LinkedIn top voice. And so I'm kind of a weird person. And I, I kind of ended that interaction, like thinking to myself, like, is there maybe I should have been uh, more interesting or like, 
Like, do you look for a status? Do you look for, or am I just reading this whole interaction wrong? Like, I just, I no, felt I like I didn't I, I penetrate think this it, person I think at it, all. And I they think don't want right. to talk to me. I would say, I would, I would say, Christina, you, you're reading it right. So here, but so, and here's why I say that is, let's get back to mutual condition of satisfaction. You have to establish those right away, right? Like, so for instance, when someone like, Chris Miller, you guys know Chris Miller, right? You know, Chris Miller sends more members into the C-suite than any person that we have. It's amazing. And all through her interaction. So I know that when someone refers someone to me, I jump in on it and take care of it right away in a, in a very fast speed, which I know you are too. But what I always do is I say, first of all, I like, I want to meet with you to know more about what I can do to help you first before I start talking about myself or anything. And and, and all the conversation I have, I, I, they'll start, you know, like the, the one time I said, no, I don't want to talk about me. I want to know more about you first. I, I, I said, you know, I bought and sold hundreds of businesses. I do a lot of different things. I said, you, 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 I'm sure you've looked at my credentials and, and if you hadn't, you should have, because it will make the meeting a little quicker. Like I spent time looking at your work and I know that you're doing this, this, and this, but tell me, I want to know more about what it is you need help with, because we all need help. So tell me, you know, how is business? Where are you getting it from? And I start going through those. And then by doing that, it's turning the tables. Now I'm now I know what to talk to them about, the way in which to talk to them about. And I've also put myself in a position of authority because that person right there was thinking, I'm busier than you. I'm smarter than you. Why am I meeting with you? And I don't want any of that crap. And by the way, if they're doing that, I'll just say sometimes, wait, sounds like you're too busy for more business, but that's the case. I'll just go, I'll go find the person that's like you that's looking for it. And, you know, and I, and by the way, I will say something like that, but because you want them to let them know that there is a choice in everything we do, right? There's a great, there's a great line in, in, in the movie Equalizer with Denzel Washington when he's surround. Oh no, by the, in the book of Eli, in the book of Eli, I watch it. I watch it every time. And in there, he's surrounded by all these uh, goons that are about to take him on. And they said, do you, you want us to beat you up or do you want the other option? He says, there's always a choice. There's always a choice. And so even if you're faced with the grimmest things, there's always a choice, right? And how you deal with it, the way in which you do it. And so sometimes I think we have to stand, again, with a little bit more swagger and say, whoa, first of all, I'm the expert here. So let me, let, and you don't have to say it like that, but put yourself in a position. I think the other thing is play a little harder to get, you know, like I, I'm again, the sponge worthy conversation or whatever you want to use it. But like, I don't have to do business with you. I I, I love to do business with you. I, that making money, taking your money is how I keep score. So, so, but before we do that, I want to find out whether it's worth it to even have a conversation with you. So, you know, I, and we had somebody here recently in, in the thought council that was that way and says, I'm too busy. I'm too busy about this. And you call me back in June. I said, nope, I'm not doing that. You can decide now. And if it's a, a value, I'll, I'll, I'll start you now. We'll start you in June. If that's June's your hard day. But if you find that you get value of it, I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to charge you for those two months because there is value there. But I'm not going to make, make another phone call in two months to see if you're ready. I'm not. I don't have time. There's other there's other people I could be helping that are that are worthy of what we want. Or, you know, many times somebody will say, hey, I would like to come to one of your meetings first. Sorry, can't do that. If I haven't convinced you that the value of this organization and what we can do for you right here and right now, I'm not going to do it by having you show up. OK, that's the proof that's in the pudding. That's the that's the product. That's the sweet, uh, sweet spot that we have. And and I know that when you come to that meeting and you'll say once in a while, you'll think you'll get something of value. I'll guarantee you after every meeting, you'll go, that was worth it. And that's what we want to do. And if I if I only do that six times out of 12, well, then I should be charging you six times as much. You know, that that's my two cents, Christina. OK, so be of service. Uh, sponge worthy. Yeah, find out their pain. Find out swagger. their pain. Yeah. Remember, I'm I'm there to help, and I am the expert. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. And and uh, play a little hard to get. Yep. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, Christina, if it were me, I would come and say, "Hey, I'm leading this tech tech council, 
And um, obviously, leading the tech council, you can get a real clear picture that we know what we're doing because we're with the C-suite, one of the largest organizations for C-suite executives of trusted executives. And we're looking for the right kinds of people to invite into this organization. So I'm hoping that through this conversation that we're going to have together, we'll be able to have mutual conditions of satisfaction where this is beneficial for you and beneficial for us because we only can take so many people because we're all so busy. Wow, right. you make it sound so easy. I'm basically just going <laughs> to copy that. And yeah, you, um, there's practice. the recording. Use it. Practice that. <laughs> practice, practice that in front that. of the mirror. Practice that in front <laughs> of the mirror. But by the way, when when I do the stuff that I do like that off the cuff, people think, "Oh my God, you have to make it sound easy." Well, it's because I've done it one a million times. Two, I've practiced it right, and I drink the Kool Aid constantly. So therefore, I know how to frame it right. And so don't think that now I, like this morning, I got up at 5 a.m., but I didn't get out of bed because I didn't want to wake up Tammy. And I'm thinking through all the things I got to do through the day. And then I got thinking about, OK, I've been wanting to change the speech. So what would I do if I'm standing there and then I got to go do this and then that you see what I'm, I'm doing that all the time. Right. So think about how we do that, you know. So act Absolutely. like a woman and think like a Jeffrey. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I can, you can, you can, I, you know, maybe I got some of that. I got some feminine quality stuff, I'm sure. You got your pink shirt. I got my, well, I didn't, I'm wearing my blue and white. This is my wedding shirt. This is the shirt I wore for my daughter's wedding. I only, I have one of these. And so every once in a while, I, I, I woke up this morning, uh, the baby called this morning. So I got to talk to so I changed shirts. So we're so honored. We're so honored. Yes. Yes. So how about this? Let's yeah, Deb, 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 real yeah, quick. Jump in. Well, I just had a, along the same lines, I interviewed somebody for the podcast one time and, and she was tired of the brain pickers, the people who would say, I just need to pick your brain for a minute. And her response was, my, it costs too much to get everything into my brain. So no, you can't just pick it. Yeah, that's cool. I got to say, if you got to pick my brain, it's going to be a very short conversation. <laughs> But, you know, and I just tell people like that, just nah, that's not going to be worth it for you, you know. But if I get to pick yours in, in conjunction with that and we get to figure out what we're going to do that's mutual, you got to figure out, again, you got to tell people what's in it for them, you know. Uh, you know, because I, I just don't, I, I'm I'm at the point now where if, you, if you're not bringing something to the table, I am not interested in talking to you. I I, I mean, I'm just not. Um, now that doesn't mean I don't do favors for people and so forth and so on, but you got to bring a you got to bring a hot dish to the table. You got to bring a hot dish to the dinner. I mean, you got to jump in with something. And we got people that are just trying to use us all the time. They want us. They want us to sell their products because we're the C-suite network. And by the way, we can sell their product. We got we have customers or clients that are giving us half a million dollars a month just to run some of their marketing stuff. And but they're they're but we're bringing something to the table. We're bringing a return back on the table, right? And so, but others who are coming to us and want that same thing for free, and I'm going like, why should I spend more money on your company to market you than than you're willing to spend yourself? And and if that's what you want, I don't I don't understand the equation. Well, Jeff, you have an opportunity to make more money. I have an opportunity to make money all the time. And by the way, I can make more of it with my resources doing what I want to do the way I want to do than I can for somebody else, unless you're willing to be an equal partner. And if you're not willing to be an equal partner, I'm not interested. So if you can't bring a hot dish, can't bring a roll, can't bring brawls, can't bring drink, can't bring a dessert, or, you know, um, you know, or, or, you know, a, 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 a plate of bars or something, whatever you guys, wherever you're from, then I'm not interested. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Trisha and Sonia, and then we'll wrap up. This has just been incredible. So thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting and having come into C-Suite Network as the very first paying sponsor of C-Suite Network and then coming on team and becoming CEO and partner with Jeffrey and obviously our entire team. One thing that I think is very interesting is people will look at Jeffrey or look look at the chair or look at Christina's decision maker and make them the other. And, and I think the thing that is so powerful and so important is Jeffrey isn't the other, 
He's the embodiment of what all of us are in C-suite. So I'll hear people say, oh yeah, that, but that's Jeffrey. He can walk with that swagger, right? Uh, he can say those things. There is not a single person in this room who can't say exactly what Jeffrey said because we're all leaders in the C-suite. You own the swagger of this entire platform. So yep. Christine, that person, you can walk with the exact same swagger Jeffrey just did because you're yep. creating opportunity for him to speak, be featured, be written about, um, uh, domain power of our C-suite platform because you can write him up under your profile with your digital content. Uh, there's so much there. So I just I just want to make that point. And Jeffrey, I mean, kudos because look at the way you're showing up. You are us. We are you. And that's the power of what we're all doing together. So anyway, thank you, everybody. But, but Trish, you're so spot on. I mean, each one of us, we're, we had to be this tall to get in this room. You know, we all had to be this tall. It doesn't make a difference. The, 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 the numbers behind us, the, the scale of all those things, it's just zeros. There's no difference. I always say this, a business in Main Street in Sioux Falls, South Dakota and Wall Street, it's the same issue, same everything. The only numbers, the only difference is the zeros behind the numbers. That's it. We're all the same. And, and that's why I always look at it, whether you're a, a brand new startup or you're the CEO of a billion dollar company, I treat everybody the exact same because they are, we are, right? And, and so when I see a CMO that I talk to, and I do talk to a lot of them and they come to me and I... And they, they're always just a, a, you know, surprised that I would have these kinds of levels of conversations with them. And I go, well, you're CMO. And you go, but yeah, Jeff, you're, the, you're this. I go, dude, that's just numbers. That's just experience. That's just other things. We're all in the same. So you, you drank the Kool-Aid. You're this, you're this tall. And once you gain that, that's what puts you in that. Now it's about staying in the trusted network. Now prove to me that we can be of value to each other and that we can do things together. And we operate at this level of of uh of, of ethics and you know and giving and you know and everything else that we that we espouse as an organization in terms of our principles sonia what can i do for you because then i know i'm I, up I, I, I owe you a favor <laughs> oh well i love I wanna, that i want to thank you because uh somebody was referred to me that was a general counsel in phoenix as a potential client and one of her issues was you know should she be on a board or not and then i heard about you being at that event and I said, I want you to go to that event. I want you to listen to him. And then I want you to tell me what you think. And it, the, your whole presentation, your swagger, everything, she immediately sent me an email and she said, wow, what a guy. I'm so glad you're part of that organization. When can we start? So I owe you. Oh, <laughs> oh well, thank you, Sonia. That makes me, you made my day. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's the the one thing that, you know, if you, people ask me what I really do this for, it's to hear that kind of stuff, Right. I mean, to do that, you know, and 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 by the way, it, it's always great. You know, people write to you about, I saw you on, on this show. I saw you on this. I saw you on United Airlines when I was going to Fiji or whatever it is. And uh, or they, uh, you know, that's that kind of like, wow, yeah, I did this because of this. Or they quote me or even in some cases, and Tricia knows this and some of you, Allison knows this because she's read them before. Uh, they even write back to you, you saved my life. Uh, because of my deepest and darkest time, I was thinking of this and I read this or I saw this or you said this. And so that's, uh, you know, that's why we do what we do and we keep doing it. And so, and if we can bring more people in together like this. So next time for this next meeting, I encourage all of you to bring one or two people, all right, new people, bring them so they can hear the, the power of all of this together. And that's what this is about. So thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm absolutely honored. Don't forget all of our events coming up because we got a lot going on and uh, come to as much as you can because there's a pony in there somewhere. There's a pony in there somewhere. And or a beagle right. if you're dead. There's a beagle. Maybe That's a beagle. It. Yeah. Well, it. sales. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Good. So with that, we'll complete our time. Jeffrey, everybody, let's lean in. Would you unmute yourself and let's give a big waffle <laughs> and thanks to Jeffrey Hazlett. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you on Celebrates on Friday, and we've got great programs. Check csweetnetwork.com. Bye for now. Lots of love to each of you. Get that swagger. Let's make it happen, sisters and brother. Bye for now. Thanks. <laughs>